Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. Um, this definitely is not going to be a long video. It's just going to be a short one. I'm just going to um, talk about a, a, a strange vision or dream. I'm not sure whether it was a vision or a dream. I was kind of in between that state. Well, when you get your dreams, it's kind of REM sleep state. I was a little more awake than asleep, but I had this very strange set of dreams. And one in particular that was very, very strange, very strange. And it had to do with Hillary Clinton. And actually, Bill Clinton was in the dream too, but I don't really recall uh, Bill Bill's partners in this dream as much as I remember Hillary because it was so odd. Um, I'm going to tell you the dream, and then I'll read a couple of verses, and then that's going to be it for my, my video. But... Um, There was a lot of things going on in this dream, and suddenly I was with my I was with my mother and her sister. Now, what that means, I don't know, but I was my my aunt and my mother and myself were together. We were in some room. I don't know whether it was a hotel room. We we were in some kind of well some kind of room. And we were actually gone into, there was Hillary Clinton in this room. And she was laughing, you know, her hysterical cackle that she does. And um, and she was laughing and laughing. And we were trying to talk to her. We were actually trying to engage her with in conversation. And I don't recall the, the exact communication of what we were saying to her. That she started to show off. She started to basically expose herself um, as to who she was and what she was about in this conversation that we were having. And then she got really cocky as though she wanted to show off the reason why she had as much power as she did. And this is the part that got really weird. She started to she took down her pants she was wearing a pair of pants and she took down her pants and she wanted us to see her nakedness if you will okay it wasn't a pleasant sight i'm gonna tell you it was really weird she took down her pants and she exposed her her lower self to us and she had been mutilated and she was very proud of it and mutilated i i mean that she looked like she was all stitched up i was stitching Stitch, look, there was stitches. She was stitched up, let's put it that way. And she was showing off as though it was the funniest thing. And, and so this is how she was getting away with what she was doing. And I don't think that, of course, it doesn't mean that that's exactly, that ever, ever happened in the physical. Perhaps this was a, a, a spiritual exposure that she had somehow thrown away her, her femininity. She'd thrown away who she was as a woman. You know what I'm saying? She had to give it away. She had to give it up or something to that effect. I don't know. But that that was very strange. And my, my, we were all shocked that, she, first of all, she did that. She showed off herself like that to us. And we were also shocked by what she had done to herself. Like, we were really like, what? And she was really proud and she was laughing and so it was hysterical. And that basically was the end of the scene. And Bill Clinton came into this picture somehow. And I don't remember exactly, but he was also in this dream. Um, very odd. I just thought it was something that I needed to to do, do a video on. Even though, excuse me. It's disgusting coming out of me. Anyway, even though I don't understand what it meant, but somehow I felt like she was exposing herself to it. She was exposing her wickedness. Her her nakedness was going to be exposed and exposed in what she did and how she got to the place that she did. Um, and anyway, I just want to read a couple of verses about nakedness. Um, Lamentations 1, 8. Jerusalem hath grievously sinned, therefore she is removed. All that, 
all that honored her despise despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Yea, she sigheth and turneth backwards. Um, a couple more verses. Uh, this is Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16 <clears throat> says, uh, starting at verse 35, Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of God, because thy filthiness was poured out and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms and thy lovers and all the idols of thy abominations and all the blood of thy children which thou didst give unto them. Behold, therefore, I will gather all thy lovers with whom thou hast taken pleasure, and all them that hast loved, with all them that thou hast hated, I will gather them around about thee, and discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness. And I will judge thee, as women will break wedlock and shed blood are judged, and I will give thee blood in fury and jealousy. And I will give thee into their hands, and they shall thrown, throw down thy eminent place, and shall break down thy high places. They shall strip thee of thy clothes, and shall take thy fair jewels, and leave thee naked and bare. Uh, uh, Revelations 3.18, this is my last verse. I counsel thee by me of me gold tried with fire that thou may be rich and white raiment that thou may be clothed that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with eyes salve that they may seest mayest see i think that's all i need to say it was like i said it was a very strange dream it was very very strong i, mean, I was having all like a lot of images and dreams and seeing a lot of things but that one stuck out like a sore thumb and it was very very strong very odd but I think that's all I need to say I, I'm not going to go any further than that just to say that, that I've had this odd vision and it had to, specifically to do with Hillary Clinton and she was very proud of her, her nakedness oh and maybe before I finish maybe I'll read the passage about the Jezebel spirit in Revelation chapter 2 Church of Thyatira Verse 18, excuse me, and unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath eyes like unto the flame of fire, and feet like fine brass. I know thy works in charity and service and faith, and thy patience in thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered that, suffer that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my children to commit fornication. And to eat sacri things sacrificed unto idols, I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he that searches the reins of the heart, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and to the rest of Thyatira, and many, as many have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye already have, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh, and keep my works until the ends, to him will I give the power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall be broken to shivers, even as I received my father. And I will give him the morning star, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So I think that's really all I need to say in this video, except to say, oh, I want to say one, one other thing. I was looking into the harvests again. I was thinking about the harvest, and I think that has a lot of validity. Uh, about Revelations chapter uh, 6, the third seal, and that it's talking about the harvest Christ saints and injustice that is meted out to the saints of God, because it mentions the barley, and the third seal, 
chapter 6, verse 5, And I heard the beast say, Come and see, and I behold a low, low a black horse. And he said, of, He that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures for a barley for a penny, and see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. These are the harvests of the saints. Um, the barley represents the first covenant believers. The wheat represents those who are baptized into Christ Jesus, because Jesus is a wheat. I've proven that. Watch my video, Bring in the Sheaves. Uh, and then the oil represents the virgins. You think of extra virgin olive oil, or that would be the virgins. And the, the, the parable of the ten virgins, only five make it out of the ten. They are the oil harvest. And then you have a harvest of the wine, which are the tribulation saints and also the martyred saints. They're also considered wine. So martyred saints, that would be the church of Smyrna, I think, or Sardis. I think it's Smyrna. I always get those two wrong. But anyway, um, so just thinking about how that is. The, the, this is about the harvest of the saints of God. Excuse me. I don't know why I'm yelling. But, um, and I was looking up the, the, the harvest for each of these, this, um, these harvests. First harvest was represented by the, the, the barley. Is the first harvest is represented by Pentecost. Excuse me, let's get it wrong. Uh, by Passover, which happened when Jesus died on the cross. It was Passover. And he went to hell and released the saints from their um, place where they were being held and took them to paradise, took them up to, to heaven. And then when he rose from the dead, it was when they were raving the bread or the wheat wheat offering and he is the first fruit among the wheat harvest um, and then we are also counted as wheat because we died in Christ we're buried in his death burial and resurrection we also become part of the wheat harvest so those who are, are baptized into Christ Jesus are part of the wheat harvest and so that the spring represents the barley and then the late spring to early oh, midsummer late summer is the wheat harvest that's that period in there starting at Pentecost then you have the olive harvest which I looked up and it looked it starts in the end of August basically around the same the end of the wheat harvest is when the olives are harvested from, from basically depending on their ripeness from um, uh, late August so the end of the wheat harvest is when the olive harvest starts olive to to basically the um, beginning of winter or to November and then interestingly enough it's that the end of or, uh, around the, the end of fall or beginning of fall somewhere in the middle of fall October November is when you start the the wine harvest so it all has a, a progression it all has a continuation one after the other after the other after the other so the first is the first covenant believers then you have the wheat which is Christ Jesus and those who are baptized into Christ Jesus because the grain of wheat has to fall and die in order to produce. And we are expected to take up our cross by following him in the waters of baptism. So basically we have been baptized into Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. That's Romans 6 and Romans 8. That's what it says and that's what it means. You're baptized into Christ, you become part of the wheat harvest. But if you do not get baptized, then you're part of the olive harvest, uh, the oil harvest, and you are judged according to your works. Okay. Um, and then you have the wine harvest, which is the grape harvest, which is those who are martyred or those who have been left behind and have to face the beast. And that is the olive harvest. So it's all very interesting. Um, I, I'm seeing this connection. It's very, very strong. But um, I think that's really all I needed to say on this video. Yeah, that's all I needed to, to get out. Um, it's been my, you know, it, it's... The Lord gave me this calling. I didn't understand it. Oh, who can understand such a thing? Uh, all I know is that he, he gave it as my calling to try to get as many people into the wheat harvest as possible. Okay? I, I'm thinking that maybe when the bride is taken, and you, you, you see the, the, the parable of the, two, the ten virgins, perhaps, I, and I'm just assuming this, now I'm just going to, ten virgins. which is in Matthew, the parable of the ten virgins. Now, this is just an assumption on my part that um, the rapture of the church 
which is the wheat harvest, um, occurs first. And perhaps the ten virgins have to stay behind for the three days of darkness. I don't know. I'm just, this is an assumption on my part. Um, they went out to, to meet the to meet the bridegroom. Five were wives and five were foolish. Some had oil in their lamps. The bridegroom tarried and they slumbered and they slept. At midnight a cry was made and behold a bride, bridegroom cometh, cometh and go ye out to meet him. And all the virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wives, give us, up, give us up your oil, or for our lamps have gone out. And the wives said, not so. Um, and then there are some who are left behind in the time of darkness, is what it says. Where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Anyway, I'm going to let you look that up for yourself. I think there's also another, another, um, another passage for it. But, it, you know, basically... This is just an assumption on my part. I, and you don't have to take this as gospel or as the say the word or anything like that. I'm just saying, thinking that I know that the bride is taken. I know the bride will be taken uh, at the wheat harvest, perhaps at Pentecost. And since the olive harvest doesn't come till later, late August, that's when the olive harvest begins. Perhaps they have to be left behind. They're left behind because they're not ready. Uh, for the transformation and the Lord's still sifting through the olives because they're not ripe yet and perhaps their transformation doesn't come and they're not invited up to the wedding immediately perhaps there's a time in between the rapture of the wheat harvest and the rapture of the the oil I don't know uh, just an assumption on my part because I don't have a, a witness for it but it just seems to me that <clears throat> if there's an order for harvest and the, the Bible does say that there's an order um, you know, that, it, that, that every, every man in his own order. And if you are of the oil harvest, then I have to assume, I'm just an assumption that the oil, there's a delay between the wheat harvest and the oil or rapture of the oil harvest or the, uh, gathering of the oil harvest. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's all I need to say on this video. God bless. I'll talk to you later.